Touring kayaks offer endless opportunities to view and enjoy the outdoors. Coastal waters, big lakes, surfing, day trips, fishing and bird watching, all are possible once you begin to paddle your own boat. With these opportunities comes responsibility. For the ocean can change moods in a moment, and even big lakes can have attitudes all of their own. Kayak touring can be a fun and rewarding activity if common sense prevails and certain precautions are taken. These precautions begin when you choose the route for the day and the group you will paddle with. Inexperienced paddlers should choose a route close to shore. Smaller lakes, protected waterways without fast current, and protected coastlines with less than one foot of surf. Planning the route for the day involves obtaining the weather forecast and tide tables for the area, deciding on a distance the group can paddle, discussing local water hazards, and establishing intermediate meeting points on the route. Once the route is decided, you should file a float plan, listing the group size, route, and expected return time with local authorities and or responsible friends. And remember, the water is no place for drugs or alcohol. The next step of preparation begins when you dress for the trip. Know the weather forecast and the water temperature and dress accordingly. On warm, sunny days, paddlers can easily become overheated. Quick drying fabrics that provide sun protection are important. Don't forget a hat, sunglasses, and a lot of drinking water. With chilly weather or water, you'll want a warmer base layer like a wetsuit or wind protection like a waterproof paddling jacket. Hypothermia, which is the body becoming too cold to function, is the number one cause of death in kayak touring. Even on a warm, sunny day, one brief mistake can immerse you in frigid water and lower your body temperature. Since the weather can change quickly, store your extra layers of synthetic clothes in your rain gear in a waterproof bag for easy access. Cotton is not a good option, since it will just cool you off once it gets wet. Proper equipment is essential for kayak touring. Your personal flotation device or PFD should fit you tightly and be worn at all times. Fasten your PFD, then test the fit by tugging up at the shoulders. If the shoulder straps go over your ears, then it is too loose or improperly sized. Tighten the straps to the appropriate fit. In a sit on top, you sit with your legs out in front of you. You can adjust the foot braces to accommodate your leg length. Some sit on tops have thigh straps to give you more boat control. To get out, simply straighten your legs and slide the straps off your knees. Closed deck or touring kayaks have an optional spray skirt that fits around the cockpit to keep the sun and the waves out. These boats require flotation or closed chambers in order to float high in a capsize. If you flip, immediately tuck forward. To get out, simply pull the ripcord on the spray skirt and push out of the boat, doing a forward somersault. You should pop to the surface with your paddle in one hand and your kayak in the other. Don't let wind separate you from your gear. To launch your boat on deep water, sit on the dock facing the same direction as the kayak. Shift your weight to the center of the boat, then slip into the sitting position. On a beach, set the boat facing out in just enough water to float easily. Use the paddle for balance. With a push or two and a few good strokes, you will be paddling away. Paddling a kayak is easy. It all starts with good balance. Loosen up your hips and get a feel for the boat's stability. The paddle is held a little bit more than shoulder width apart with hands loose. Don't grip too tightly. The important part is that the blade makes a solid purchase on the water on each side of the boat. Paddles differ. If the blades are in line with each other, you're going to hold both hands relaxed on the shaft. If the blades are offset, like this one, you'll have one control hand and the other hand will slide so you can take a stroke on each side. To go forward, pull the paddle from your toes to your hip, one side and then the other. The paddle will stay slightly vertical. Too often paddlers use their arms for all their power. 
The result is tired arms and ineffective strokes. For the most efficient forward stroke, rotate your body on each stroke to use the large muscles of your torso rather than the small muscles in your arms. This will give you extra power on a long day of paddling. Many touring boats come equipped with rudders to keep the boat going straight in big waves and wind. Engaging the rudder will assist you in going in a straight line. To turn in tight spots, or to keep from turning in wind and waves, you will use a forward sweep stroke. This will turn you and propel you forward. Place the paddle in the water by your toes. Keeping the blade fully immersed, draw a semicircle to the back of the boat. Again, rotate your body for full power. For a sharper turn, you will use a reverse sweep. This is essentially the opposite of the forward version. It will turn you, but it will also slow you down. Linking a forward and reverse sweep, one on each side, can provide a really crisp turn. Reverse paddling complements your other strokes and is important for stopping and maneuvering. Without changing your grip, use the back of the blade and push forward from your hips to your knees, keeping the blade close to the boat. After you have more experience, you'll want to get training in the low brace. A brace can support you if a wave or distraction throws you off balance threatening to flip you. All of these strokes require practice to master. To develop a comfortable style of your own, get out and enjoy some paddling. Obviously, despite the best laid plans, paddlers of all abilities sometimes flip, requiring a rescue. Once in the water, it is essential to hang on to all your equipment. Wind and waves can easily separate you from your boat. Remain calm and breathe. If you're very close to shore, simply swim the boat in. Or have a friend help tow you in. If you're in the surf, push your boat in ahead rather than hanging on and getting pummeled with your boat. You'll need to recover from a capsize quickly so you can minimize your exposure to the elements. Ocean and lake temperatures will often be quite cold, even in warm weather. Hey, Randy, how you doing? Woo! Cold, cold, we'll get you out of the water as quick as possible. In an assisted rescue, the rescuer leans over and spans the cockpits with a paddle to immobilize the boats. The rest of the group will stop paddling and remain close by. To get up on the deck, kick your feet up so you're laying on the surface and then pull the kayak under you. From this low position, you can slide into the cockpit and twist into the seat. Keep your weight low for improved stability. While relying on your friend, pump out the remaining water. If a paddler has trouble re-entering the boat, a stirrup made from a loop of rope or webbing can provide a welcome step for re-entry. A friend can add extra stability. Getting back on a sit-on-top is easy. You will use the BBL technique to re-enter the boat. First, flip the boat upright, then pull your belly on the boat, then twist to get your butt on the seat, and then swing your legs into place. If you flip out of range of assistance, you can use an inflated float on your paddle as an outrigger. The paddle will be held or attached perpendicular to your boat. Again, kick your feet up so you're laying on the surface, and then pull the kayak under you. Rest your legs on the paddle shaft, sliding one leg in and then the other. Turning towards the paddle float will help you lean in that direction so you can establish a sitting position. At this point, use your bilge pump to empty the water. Simply starting a trip as a group isn't enough for safety. Paddlers travel at different speeds, depending on their varying boats, skills, and interest. The group should stay close enough together to be able to hear without having to yell, but far enough apart to avoid collision. Conditions like other traffic, fog, wind, current, and tides can all enhance or stop a trip. Each region has its own local challenges. For instance, the sudden onset of fog is typical in some coastal regions, causing total disorientation, 
Fog requires paddlers to rely on a compass and sound for orientation. If you become lost from your group, you should try to remain where you are. If a safe landing is nearby, land and await the rest of the group. You can use your whistle to alert the group to your location. Another hazard for kayakers is other traffic on the water. Particularly when crossing shipping and commercial lanes, kayakers should be extra cautious, prompt, and predictable. Brightly colored clothing and reflective tape on PFD paddles and boats will enhance your visibility, but you have to assume that large boats won't see you. In some areas, the tide can have a dramatic effect on the difficulty of paddling. Shallow areas are exposed during low tide. The currents caused by the changing tides can be considerably faster than the average speed of a touring paddler. Know which way the tide is moving and when the tide will change, then plan accordingly. Wind is a major threat to the kayaker. Wind can make it difficult to hold your course or to turn. A headwind can slow down your progress or stop you. But that's not all it does. Wind usually generates waves, which create a whole new set of boat control problems, including staying upright. Most kayakers prefer to avoid the wind. Any strong weather on open water can be dangerous. Landing will be easy, unless you have to deal with the surf. To land in the surf, your goal is to come in on the back of the wave and get out very quickly. Look for a protected area, then watch for rocks and people on the beach. If you haven't used good timing to avoid the waves during a landing, the break will quickly turn you sideways. Lean into the wave and ride it out. Let's review some essential points. For a short trip close to shore, you'll need personal clothing, PFD, paddle, bilge pump, paddle float, food and water, extra clothing in a waterproof bag, plenty of sun protection, and a whistle for emergencies. As you get more experience, you may choose to venture further from shore or on longer trips. For those trips, your group will need to carry additional gear. That gear includes communication equipment, signaling devices like flares and a flashlight, and a weather radio, navigational aids, charts, tide tables, and compass, emergency supplies, first aid kit, extra food, water, and clothing, a knife, matches or a lighter, and a spare paddle. A quick release tow line is also a good addition in case a paddler becomes fatigued. Depending on where you want to go and what kind of paddling you want to do, there's a lot to learn. As you venture further into the sport, you'll want to learn more by reading, studying videos, and taking classes. You must realize there is risk involved in taking a kayak touring trip. By taking proper precautions and using sound judgment and common sense, you can have a great day of boating. Be alert and have fun out there.